Arrow Hawk tutorial part two. So once we're happy with the uh, GPS and photo alignment, then we can uh, click start processing, and we get some options here. Uh, the focal length uh, is an important thing. Uh, this is just an initial estimate. Uh, this is generally it's pulled out of the EXIF data of the the JPEG, so you don't need to do anything. But if it has a uh, and not a sensible value here, then you can just put a, a estimate of the focal length in here. Uh, and this principal point is corresponds to the center of the image as an initial estimate. Uh, the other parameter worth noting is uh, this GPS matching radius. Uh, this uh, should be set to about the ground distance that's seen in an individual image. Um, so this is the distance that's used. Uh, so any photo will only be matched with a photo with a GPS value within this radius. So uh, the other parameters can pretty much just be left as default. So you click OK. And uh, the processing will start. This can take um, anywhere from a few minutes to hours and hours, depending on how many images you have and how much overlap and and you have in the images. Uh, so the processing is going to be three steps. So the first step is the feature detection, then there's the feature matching, and then there's the structure for motion step in which you actually see the scene building up as it's going along. So keep an eye on this progress bar along the bottom, and uh, I'm going to skip forward for the moment. Actually, at any stage, you can uh, pause the processing in the menu, and this will uh, you can actually close the project down at any time and then when you open it up again it'll carry on from where it left off because it's continually saving uh, everything in the background as it's going along. During the structure from motion processing you can uh, see the points uh, appear in the scene. Um, at the beginning uh, the points can be uh, at strange angles until uh, it seals down a little bit after it gets uh, cameras from more than just a single line of processing. Um, so you can view it as it's going along. Now that the scene is finished processing, you should have a, a whole bunch of black dots on the ground. These represent the points that are matched between images. And red dots in the air represent the camera positions that are actually found and being used and they are connected to their corresponding GPS. <coughs> uh, so if the scene has gone wrong, like uh, if it's gone, points have gone a bit crazy or the scene is missing, you've got no points or things, so you can uh, follow some of the suggestions uh, on the side panel which you can reprocess the last step uh, of the track from motion. To fix things. Uh, if it's all gone well, then you can uh, move on to the next step, uh, which is to add ground control points. Uh, that's if you have ground control points. If you don't have any ground control points, you can skip this step. Uh, your scene just won't be aligned uh, accurately. Uh, so in this step, we're going to um, click accurately on the ground control points. Uh, so to start with, we have an estimate of their projection in the images, so I can um, zoom in on the current ground control point and uh, I can click recenter to make sure I know which one I'm on and now I'm going to find my target in the image and click it, in this case it's actually this um, uh, yellow pole here so actually using better markers is, is preferable so you right click to create a little blue plus and you can um, click again to to refine it or zoom in further uh, and then you can move to the next one and so for each um, image you click on the ground control point marker uh, and so once you've done um, at least uh, three um, ground control points with at least two views uh, then you can use uh, the rigid adjust button. Um, I'll show you this in a minute. An extra